having run out of compressed air in a can, I decided to check out one of these air dusters. This is the Yomiel air duster, and it's got a bunch of tips that it came with. Well, it's got some stuff on here. I'm not really gonna spend much time on the device, uh, this particular brand or whatever. Yeah, I, I was kind of surprised that this came in so inexpensively. So far, I've used it on a couple of projects, just cleaning stuff, and I do notice that it does move a lot of air, and I'm not gonna turn this thing on because it is really, really loud. I'm not sure if it moves as much air as a compressed air can, at least a new compressed air can, because the nozzle in the compressed air can is quite a narrow nozzle. The, the narrowest tip that it comes with, this one here, is definitely wider than the straw that comes out of a compressed air can. So it moves a lot of air. It was able to get the things I needed cleaned and get the dust off of stuff that needed dusting. So I'm gonna to continue to use this and I don't foresee buying a can of compressed air. Which it's a good thing for a whole variety of reasons. I just wanted to see how this thing was put together. What's the battery situation and what's the protection situation inside of something like this? So let's just dive in here. It's definitely two sides of a mold and there's screws all on this side to hold it together. It seems like it might have another piece on the bottom here that holds it together, or maybe that just, maybe by splaying this apart, this will come apart as well. I have charged it, but I've discharged it down most of the way. Um, don't try this at home. Just taking out the four screws on top. Okay, I've got all four screws out. And I'm just gonna grab this and see if I can separate it. It does have stickers on it that are for instructing you how to use it. It has press and hold it, it will turn on to its low speed. Press it again, it turns on to its medium speed, again for high speed. Press and hold it in any one of those modes and it will turn off. It also has like an, an armed mode, so once you turn it on, the light here is a little, very tiny light here that will flash green. So you can just press the button once and it will start back up again if, if it's been turned on within the last like 30 seconds or so, which is it's a neat feature. But they really do make this a long press before it turns on, probably so it won't turn on in the box. So let's try to separate this. Um, it is coming apart, but this has this circular cap on the back. And then we, like I said, it has this cap on the bottom that I'm kind of curious how that's going to be assembled together. It is parting at the top, but that's about all I'm seeing so far. Maybe this needs to come off. Just try to get. Oh, geez. Somehow I turned it on. How did that? Oh, my finger. <laughs> my finger down here. Uh, pressed. Yeah, that'd be great if I had like a complete disconnect thing. I mean, I guess if the battery was fully discharged, it would be off, but it is not fully discharged. It is near discharged but not fully discharged. I'm gonna try to avoid pressing that button so it doesn't turn back on again like that. Well, now you've heard it. That's on its lowest speed. In there. Oh, it's starting to come off of there. I wonder if it just clips over the top of the plastic. That really is grabbing. Am I missing a screw? I see one, two, three, four screws. And then this doesn't have any sort of a, no, this doesn't, <laughs> unless that's glued, which would suck. It very much does not want to come apart. Can I try this other side? Maybe the other side is more amiable to being opened and I can use that as a, a starting point. Oh, I see that motor. However this is clipped around here, it is really clipped in. Oh wait. wait, 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 there we go. So that cap came off finally, cool. So it does kind of snap around this, but this is now off. So now I think I can just grab this. And the motor is, to feel it moving. The only thing I gotta be careful of is the uh, The thing I wanted to be careful of is to not get my finger anywhere near here because it could turn on. The battery's not fully drained. Okay, so this little cap split here at the bottom. I don't really care about that. As long as this goes back together again so I could use it. It took a lot of force and I might have just brute force opened it. I'm gonna try to keep 
everything on the side that it seems like it wants to be on. Is the motor? Yeah, the motor just kind of will go in either direction. So I see the circuit board is laying on this side. So I'm going to tilt it to the right so that the motor and the circuit board and the battery are on the same side. If that makes any sense, which if it doesn't, you'll probably see in a second what I mean when I get everything opened up. Let's check. There's a little filter piece. I'm just going to take that out for the moment. What we got? Nothing. Oh, oh, the little LED. The little LEDs on this side. But I see a connector for that, so I think I got enough room to get. I'm just moving the the little wire, the, the two wires that are going to this little like work light LED. Open this all the way up. So I've opened it all the way up. Cool. This cap did crack. This is the bottom part, the bottom part of the assembly. It did crack a little bit there, but it does pop off. It is something that is not glued in. It's just kind of pressed in place, which is really slick. And there's some really cool stuff here. What I'm immediately noticing is that it is not what I thought it would be, which is a brushless motor, which kind of makes sense because this is a really cheap design. So, but it's just a very high speed brushed motor. It's got a turbine on this, on this side obviously, and it's just blowing the air past it here. And then it goes through a duct and then it is on this side here. And then it's all just, it's not even really a duct. It's just, here's the chamber. And then your only way out is through this little hole. And then you can use different pieces, obviously, to attach to it. And then there's different extensions and restrictors to get, you know, to again, use for different purposes and different functions. Everything here has connectors, which is really slick. So it is glued down, but I can disconnect the motor, which is nice. It's got to wiggle a little bit to get past the, I think it's just, I don't know what they use there. Just a little bit of some kind of glue. There we go. So the motor's disconnected. This is pretty decently put together. The battery is going to be interesting. I do see what looks like a temperature sensor here, and it's not just a single cell. It is a three cell pack. There's three lithium 18650 cells in here in series for a total of 11.1 .1 volts and 22.2 .2 watt hours. It's a pretty beefy pack. And my initial curiosity on this was when this is operating, what's the power consumption? We're going to find out. I'm going to put a clamp meter on here and we'll start it up and then we'll see what we get for DC power output and voltage when it's running. But let's keep exploring before that. So the battery, it's just battery plus battery minus going to this pack. I can always wrap this back up again. There's a little bit of foam here that's holding this little temperature sensor down. Let's do this. I'm going to cut right there and see if I can just see the top of this. I just want to see if this is a protected pack or not. My guess is that it is. It's got fish paper on this side, which is nice. And on this, oh yeah, we've got a, yep, 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 yep. We've got something going on over here on this side, which is what I wanted to see. I'm trying to be able to reuse this plastic again. Let me just go a little bit further with this. You know what, let's just go all the way around with this. When I reassemble this, I am going to try to put this plastic wrap back on again and then tape it back together. It's fine because this is they're just packaging this together. This plastic doesn't really do much besides serve as the outer wrap. Behind this is, oh yeah, cool. This is great to see. So what we've got here is full cell protection for both charge and discharge. It's like a little mini tool battery power plus and minus coming in. So for discharge and charge, got battery plus, battery terminal one, battery terminal two, and battery negative. And then you got these nice, pretty beefy looking MOSFETs that are sets in series for both discharge and then charge. And then a controller that is an ICM CM1033. I'm glad that there's not only charge balancing, but charge protection both charge and discharge on the battery pack itself. Let's get the battery disconnected. Also, I'm kind of curious what the battery voltage is. <laughs> I tried to discharge it down as much as I could before I was gonna make this video, but it kept going and I just didn't want to keep running at its highest speed until the battery went dead because it's it does heat up quickly, which leads me to believe that it's it's pulling quite the amperage from this, this pack. It's saying 11.1 .1 nominal, which is a little strange because there are two amp hour cells. Let's see that ICR 18650 20P. 
2 amp hour, looks like the manufacturer is EVE, 7.2 watt hour each. It's got some nice silicone wire in, coming out of here that's rated, it's appliance wiring material, it's UL recognized, it's great, 200 degrees Celsius, 3 kilovolts DC, so 3000 volts DC rated, that's pretty awesome. Usually you see wiring material rated to like 300 volts AC, uh, maybe 600 volts, but 3 kilovolts. That's something. Let's take a look at what the cell's voltage is right now. I'm nervous about this because I think it's gonna be higher than I thought it was gonna be, considering the amount of time that I discharged it for. and did not charge it up fully, but let's give it a check. 10.8, <laughs> so 10.8 by three, 3.6. So it's still pretty fully charged. Weird. It's, I don't know if it's just like the rebound voltage once this thing runs. I must have been using it for 15 minutes on the lowest speed. Uh, and then I used it for a while on the, on the higher speed, so I don't, and I haven't charged it since, so I don't really know what that's all about. Okay, well, uh, maybe it's not using as much power as I think it's using? I don't know. Anyways, let's take a look at the rest of the circuitry. We've got just a small circuit board. There's a toggle, or a momentary that looks pretty nice. The action is not great, but the switch looks nice. USB-C port, it's got one screw holding it in. So maybe this is just a guide and then there's the one screw. I wanted to make sure to get the motor and the battery out before I took this circuit board out. It isn't doing any sort of detection on the fan speed itself. I wanna keep springs and stuff away from, oh man, two springs just popped out and I did not see where they came from. Oh, cool, they just go on there. There's the button and there's the two springs that go into the button and the button just kind of slides back in. I can see the two little latches there where they slide down and the springs press against that. Cool, all right. Glad I found where that was supposed to go. Here's a little de-identified microcontroller. It looks like we've got some current monitoring. It looks like there's a shunt resistor right there. And then the main FET that's gonna drive the the motor itself. So it looks like there's some feedback, at least for current protection, which would make sense if, this, if the blower were to get stuck, you'd want this thing to shut off so you didn't overload the battery. Pretty cool they've got the protection on this board and also the proper battery, uh, the cell level protection and the pack level protection. They got quite a bit of board real estate, but man, they really went with the, I think those are all 0201 components. They went with really, really tiny service mount components there. So not, if you needed to re repair something on this board, it'd be a little bit of a, a to-do. This is really well put together. I mean, the, from the outside, the moldings, it's built down to a price, but they didn't skimp on the internal stuff, which is great. And the, the plastic itself seems pretty good. I mean, it's really stiff and rugged plastic. So there's that. And then also if you needed to open this thing up to repair anything or clean this, this filtery material out, you can do it or replace it, I guess, at some point. Let me just get set up here. We're, we'll do a little test to see just how much power this is drawing. So I'm gonna connect everything back to the board here. This is motor terminal. Let's not get motor terminal and battery mixed up because they're the same connector. That would suck. The connectors are only going one direction, but the fact that they are the same connector Man, don't get those mixed up. Well, nothing would really happen, I guess, the other way around, because there's no power supply to push anything to the power supply. But yeah, make sure you get these things plugged in right. Gets power back up, there it goes. It's a little weird that they put those LEDs in different locations because there's a little hole on the side of the enclosure, and on this one, on the other side of the enclosure, right there. That's the hole that you're supposed to be able to see the charging indicator and the operating indicator. There's no light guide or anything on the other side. So it's really, really hard to see it. It's so, so dim, but that's now I know why, because they just put two LEDs on the board and it's like, oh, whatever gets through, gets through. Handy dandy amp clamp. Let's get it into 20 amps DC, zero it. I think I'm gonna put it on the battery because on the motor side, it might just be a little too noisy. I'm gonna rotate all of this. Fan will be at the top. The battery's kind of here at the bottom. Now let's get the motor hooked up. Motor's connected. We got current across the battery. Let's fire this up. Where is the button? I see it down there. <laughs> Gotta hold it in for a second. All right, that's the low speed. 6.9 volts and 2.9 amps. Let's go to the next speed.
Now 8.3 volts on the motor, 4.2 amps, 32 watts, 35 watts, and we're going to go to the highest speed. We're pushing 45 watts, 9.5 volts, 5.5 amps. Holy crap. Let's turn that off. That is loud. That is very loud. But it moves a ton of air. And you can see now this little green light. I'm not sure if you can see it down there. Uh, let me turn off all the lights. You can see that that green light is flashing, meaning that it is armed. So if I don't have to press and hold the button anymore, if I just press it once, it'll just resume. Press and hold, and it turns back off again. So that's a neat feature. Let me get the lights back on. I think with a bit of restriction, it might go a little bit higher. Uh, yeah, I, I restricted it a bit, and it seems to be about the same. I'm, I would imagine it go up a little bit. Ran the thing for about four or five minutes, and the highest speed, I tried to move the circuit board here, as you can see, away from the airflow as much as possible. It really wasn't getting any air movement around it, because that's how it, that's going to be inside of the shell. There's, there's no airflow being pulled up inside the middle of the shell where the circuit board is located, nor where the battery is located. And the hottest component, as you might expect, is this fat. And the fat got out to about 45 degrees Celsius. I'm happy I got one. I'm hoping I can get this thing back together again in one piece. And if not, I'll buy another one. Because overall, it works almost as good as a compressed air can. And if you need things, something that's heavier duty, you're, you're going to be using you know, an air compressor anyway with a tool for it. But for those jobs that are kind of in between, I think this can almost entirely replace a compressed air can. The battery also did not get very warm. It got up to about maybe 28 to 30 degrees Celsius. And the one thing I just, it just occurred to me that we did not check to see if this were to get blocked somehow, which there's a grill on the back of this, but you could get something to get inside there and impede the movement of this metal impeller. By the way, don't get your finger in there. That thing spins very fast. So what I'm gonna do is block it. I'm gonna put a little stick here to impede the rotation of this, but it should turn itself off and I should be able to, God, I thought I just turned on by itself. We'll put an amp clamp on the battery to see what it peaks at. It's obviously not going to be a particularly rapid response from the amp clamp because it's got about a maybe a half second resolution. There we go, allowed us to zero it again. So here we go, we're gonna just block this. I'm gonna, I mean, it starts at its lowest speed, so we'll see what happens when I try to start it. And it is doing pulsive modulation to this, so it should just stop before it gets really cranky. Yep, cool. It's blinking a red light, but that's awesome. It did pull quite a bit of current. It tried to start. Cool, it also just turns itself off off. It's not in the armed position, even given that there was a fault. So we'll just hit it and hold it down once. Very cool. It's with it has Type-C charging, which is kind of nice with it. It says five volts at two amps, so it's 10 watts charging which is good because it's not charging this pack at a high current, it's half C. Okay, so I'm gonna plug this in. Don't turn it on, I keep clicking that, just momentarily clicking that switch. The red light is blinking indicating that it's charging. It is at 259, 1.5 amp, 1.8 amps. Curious, let's get our little amp clamp back out again and see what the, the battery thinks that it's charging at. Uh, battery is showing 0 0.6 to 0 0.61, which makes sense because it's got a boost from five volts up to the voltage of the battery. Um, okay, that's it. I'm, I'm <laughs> pencils down. I like this air duster quite a bit. Again, it's this one, not sponsored in any way, shape or form by them. Um, not that I'm asking them to, but just, I bought this thing, like I said, ran out of compressed air and thought, this would be an interesting thing to play around with. And then immediately wanted to tear it apart to see, well, what's inside of it, per usual. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know, do the things for the tubes. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.